more women artists. Okay. Yes. And I think, well, those spaces are there, but I think it would be good to have more of an art education in the schools. Um, I would say, I understand that sometimes art is the last thing that people think about when they have to put food on the table and stuff because art is seen as a luxury good or a luxury industry or a lifestyle industry that a lot of people can't afford to um, have. But I think... What I go? Yeah, yeah I, I can see myself. I think even if I go into a couple I go into a couple job. And today I have my amazing cousin with me. Her name is Nakina. I'll let her do her own introduction because I always say people tend to do better with that than I do. So, <laughs> so I'll let her introduce herself. But here on this channel, we film about entrepreneurship and adulting as a young Ghanaian woman. Now today we're going to start um, the art, culture and design series. And uh, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of art, design, and culture that um, a lot of young women and men are exploring now in Ghana. And I think it's really important that we highlight it, that we appreciate and admire, and that we explore it a bit more. You know, that there are generations coming after us who have a lot to learn from it. And we are also learning from the generation ahead of us. Ahead? Yes, I had a one. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to be talking to Naki today and um, yeah, keep watching to learn more. Okay, so Naki, give us a little bit of an intro. Cool, so hello everyone, my name is Nakina. I'm an artist and illustrator from Ghana. Um, yes, I'm doing this full time now and I'm really enjoying it so far. Okay, let's give us a little bit about the background. So when did you study art? Yeah, so funnily enough, I did not study art, but I would say art has been with me my entire life. Um, ever since I was in kindergarten, I've always been drawing to the point where like the teachers in kindergarten were calling me from class to class come and draw things for them. <laughs> Which was scared by the way. But yeah. So I'll say I was always known as the art girl. But then when I went to university I decided to study architecture for about seven, eight years. So I'll say my background formally is in architecture, but I only really took the plunge to go full-time as a freelance um, artist and illustrator, which has been really exciting. So yeah, I would say I've been so far my architectural background has informed um, my practice today, so that's been great to know. That's nice, good. So what would you say the experience has been so far as a freelance Um, I would say pretty challenging but exciting as well. Um, I've been, yeah, I think it just threw me, I threw myself into the new <laughs> Things like what you see behind us. Yeah, this is a beautiful piece of art. 
by Naki. It's amazing, it's huge. I'll, I'll put clips of that in there, but it's literally almost an entire wall. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's fast up across the, the wall. It's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Yeah. We'll talk more about the details of the art of it, you know. But um, how did you find balancing your formal work with, you know, being an artist? Did you start by, I don't know how, Right now, everyone calls it a side hustle. Mm -hmm. Or did you start with it as a side hustle? And how did it go when you went to school? Okay, um, yeah. So I'll say um, my side. Well, yeah, this starts off as a side hustle. I would say painting has always been a side hustle for me, or a hobby, or something I always did in my free time. Or even yeah. if I didn't have the free time, I'll be still make the time. Yeah, I'll make the time to paint and stuff. Yeah. So I'll say ever since. I'll say especially after I left uh, senior high school. Um, okay. Was when I was about 18. Yeah, 17, 18. I'll say that when I started practicing properly, well, properly on the side, like as a painter and artist, where I started selling my works and yeah, sharing it to the public. I started my website, which was really exciting. So I think I started building that independence of saying, hey, I also do this, and this is what I enjoy doing. But um, I guess in those days, I was saying, oh, I'm doing this on the side, although I enjoy it, but let me do the formal things that to pay the bills or like, Further my education and all of that, so yeah, I think, yeah, that's yeah, I'm just losing my age, I don't know, it doesn't matter, <laughs> yeah, but that's fine. So, okay, that's interesting, that's really interesting. So, you started selling years ago, yes, yes. about a decade ago, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. So, from your teenage years, mm -hmm. that was when you started selling, mm -hmm. okay. How did you do you think that starting at that time? What influenced you, or give it, or is what gave you the confidence to say, you know what, I've been doing this this number of years, I've been enjoying it, it's doing well, I can stand on my own doing this 100. percent Yeah, I'll say definitely. I, yeah, I don't think I'll be have been able to have gone cold turkey and like just stopping school and then going um, into like full time freelance work because. I think when I was working with, or as I was um, creating my works and people showed interest, I think it gave me the confidence over the years. All the way even to the point where I decided to make the conscious decision to go full time, I still wasn't. I would be lying if I said, oh, I already knew I was going to like make it. I'm still trying to make it out here, so I'm not going to say it's an easy um, job to do. So, what? Tell us more about your process when you um, before you start a project. Before you start a project, do you plan how it's going to be? Do you just grab a canvas inside and then just start working? What was that like for you? Yeah, so um, I would say it's more of the latter. Um, okay. So I don't tend to have like a plan or idea of what I'm going to do. So normally it may start off with being the size or scale I want to work on before um, working with the materials I want to use. Because I guess the size will inform like what material would work best on the size. Then I think the subject normally comes in the middle of the painting. <laughs> what I want to do. So I just start marking the canvas and just doing whatever. Maybe I start off with the color, maybe the background color, or it could be vice versa, where I start off with the subject and think of the background after. But I think the background tend to uh, take center stage like in the process or like uh, one of the earlier things I do before like the actual artwork. Then um, I think in the middle of it is when I'll come up with idea like oh and I could take this um, narrative or maybe this is what I'm feeling would work best maybe depending on the colors I've already put in and stuff so okay. I would say the artwork tends to lead uh, the narrative as opposed to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. How would you say that our culture has influenced your work? Has it? Yeah, in so many ways. Um, so uh, yeah I would say I grew up in Ghana, so everything I saw, everything I did, everything I listened to, all the conversations, like with family, like you, <laughs> um, friends, conversations, or just general observation, like actually in the car, like driving around and stuff, or going to events, um, you are constantly inspired by the culture, like from fashion, to how people dress, to the music, to the patterns and colors, everything around us, I think, has been translated in the works. That I create, so I would say, yeah, it's literally a rainbow on campus, and I feel that's what our culture is like as well. With our kente cloth, with our batik tie and dye, to our um, 
wax prints and stuff here. Yeah, I think that has played a major role in my wax. So, um, how long have you, would you say you've been an entrepreneur? Ooh, uh, I'll say combined with the on and off about a decade. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'll say um, shortly after I graduated from my senior high school um, education, um, I started working for myself working for myself where I was doing a lot of side work. <laughs> I was doing paintings on the side as I was doing like my education. I studied architecture after my senior high school um, period. So as most of you know, like when you go into architecture, you're going in for the long haul. So I think anytime I had free time, then that's when I would paint and occasionally find people who are interested and send it to them or you know, get commissioned by them. Then yeah, so I think that started building my portfolio as well. I um, found um, my particular style yet. So I, although I can see one growing, like as you can see with the style behind us right now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would say depending on what people provide, like in terms of their brief and what they want for their homes or spaces, um, my style tends to vary. But I think I'm enjoying the process of playing with different mediums, playing with different tools and sizes and stuff. And yeah, it's been an exciting experience. Lovely. So, um, I think you just said you wouldn't say you have a particular style. What kind of artist would you call yourself? Or have you not gotten to that stage yet where you can define what it is? I think I'm getting to that point where I feel like I'm developing a style. But then I'm going to quit change, so I'm not really sure. So, I'll say, I, like, I'll say color is the basis of everything, and that's not going to ever change. Um, uh, working with lots of textures and layers. I think it's still going to be a part of everything I like part of, part of my practice. Yeah, definitely. But in terms of um, the tools or materials I use, I think those tend to um, change a lot. So if I'm working on paper, ink would, would tend to be like my go-to material because I love the vibrancy of it, how intense it can be in colours and like this variety of colours and shades and tones you can work with. You're really excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Then when I moved to canvas, I think acrylic is like my favorite medium to use because it's, it's, it dries really fast. Unlike oil, which requires blending and stuff, which I, I admire that medium, but I think with acrylic, I'm able to layer a lot of colors. I'm able to, I guess, push it to its extreme in a certain time constraint, which I really enjoy. Well, honestly, I enjoy it, but it's just part of the process, which I think works for me. Yeah. And I'm able to layer. So I think playing with those textures and stuff allows <laughs> I think you did. Okay. <laughs> I think you did. Um, so you mentioned your background in architecture. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like art and culture influenced your style as an architect? Yes, immensely. I would say um, I was always the student in class. That was always. I don't know, my, my forms and shapes were not the traditional <laughs> forms and shapes. I think I was inspired a lot by our sculptures in Ghana. I think I was also really inspired by sharp ends and pointy edges. I know that's not a, a, an architectural style we find here a lot, but I think subconsciously there was just something about it that always drew me to shapes and styles that were not necessarily typical yeah, Western yeah. style of um, designing buildings. So I'll say I yeah, agree with you, but at the, on the other hand, I could also criticize maybe the Ghanaian context and looking at our architecture sometimes, or I'll say residential especially. Um, I even wrote my dissertation on that, and I called it um, a fireplace in a tropical home, where like we sometimes adopt like a lot of European or Western styles in a very tropical context. Which doesn't make sense. <laughs> to the point where like sometimes people may have like. A fireplace or mantelpiece yeah. in a space when like we have this scotch blazing <laughs> on us, so we're never going to use it. But yeah, I think it's just really interesting. So I think those ideologies sometimes translate into my paintings as well. Like just I guess critiquing or questioning why we make certain decisions, like based on our lifestyle or how we live, yeah. and like, who we are as a people or the context we exist. So that's lovely. Okay, so. <laughs> So do you see yourself staying as an artist or retiring as an artist? That's my goal. Yeah, yeah I, I can see myself. I think even if I go in, I go 
Either you need to be consistent, you need to find the right agent or representative, the galleries or institutions to represent you. If you do it by yourself as well, like you just need to be able to network properly. So it's a massive, it's it's not massive, well it is a big industry to be in, but then it, it, you also need to be quite strategic, but also not to the point where your relationships are, are fake. Like you need to build a good portfolio so you also have the right clientele or collectors to sell your works to. All of that are people related, which sometimes going to always work in your favor. But I think if one is consistent and they do not do play their cards right, or they're lucky, <laughs> they couldn't like um, succeed in being a full time artist. But yeah, there are times where I do need to find that balance of like doing like other jobs to sustain or um, find yeah, yeah. some cash to what. Do you think um, needs to change in Ghana for artists in Ghana to embrace art and to to own it like you have done? You know, maybe maybe I should be asking what brought you to that point where you felt like this is it for me. I'm sticking with this and I'm going to make it work and it's going to succeed as I am seeing that it is doing. Yeah. What what would what what is it that yeah. we would say what you say that point? Very very tough question. Um I would well I would say it's a mixed bag of things. I'll say situational and also maybe the family I was also brought up in. So I was fortunate enough to grow up in a home where um, the support of art was like highly encouraged and I wasn't held back or told oh it's just fun and games or it's not a serious career choice and stuff. I was always encouraged so I think that um, really encouraged me. I think out of everyone in my household I'm the one who holds myself back sometimes like um, convincing myself that this could actually be something that could work for you full time and yeah I think they've been really supportive so I think with that or with that mentality that my um, household uh, provided there was an open mindset and they also provided opportunities. Um, I would say that I did grow up in a home of privilege, so I do recognize that I have been given opportunities that a lot of people do not have access to. 
So I can't just say, oh, it's easy and just go and do whatever you want and stuff. Because sometimes there are decisions that you do need to make to support yourself or your family that may not always um, be in line with your dreams and passions. So I would say I am fortunate in that sense. However, I have also um, put myself out there to be consistent and also push because obviously although like my family are supportive and stuff I'm still by myself in this way I do need to also get some income to um, you know support myself and my dreams and stuff so like I've had to work for to buy the materials myself to get the contacts I've gotten to learn like different skills go to school to learn other subjects as well so I wouldn't say it's just like I just got up and like went to paint and stuff like I've also had to um, fulfill other things or expectations, not only of other people's but myself as well, to make sure that even if the painting practice doesn't work full time, I still have something to fall back on. So, but still being true to myself that at the end of the day, this is who I'm coming from. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> it does. It does. Okay. So I like that. I, mean, I like how you've taken charge of your um, entrepreneurship journey. And I have seen Aura. Mm, yes. 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 Can you tell us a bit about Aura? Sure. Am so, I saying it right? Yes. yes. Like Aura. <laughs> <laughs> so Aura is I don't even know what to call. Well, I personally don't know what to call it yet, but it's uh, so, um, Aura is a business my mother, sister, and I um, created to I guess celebrate our uh, mutual interest in earrings. So. I think ever since we were young, my mom always loved jewelry, especially beads. So like the Ghanaian beads from like the Koro beads, the ones from Korea, ones she got from her mother. Literally, she's been obsessed with them. Like she has loads of beads, those necklaces, earrings, and all sorts. And I think my sister and I, or Nako, shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, she also uh, <laughs> become an avid. Um, jewelry user if I can use that. So I think we all just been really interested in earrings and um, me especially. I think I love wearing like funky um, bright bold earrings because um, I think my aesthetic generally is very simple and plain so I think my earrings um, tend to create that statement exactly and the plus I also have been short dreadlocks before so I think that was a good offset um, for my short dress. I think ever since I had that it's just grown and I've been obsessed ever since. Um, so yeah, so I think it's just something that we're trying to come up with, but I think right now it's just, um, I'll say a mini docu-series, if I can say that way, just um, us talking about our earrings um, and how we fell into it and why we adore wearing earrings, and I'm sure all of you do too, so. Um, I'll put the link in the yeah. description box so you can see it, it is beautiful, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. yeah so. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. We're still in the early stages, but I think yeah, right now we're just talking about ourselves and hopefully that will inform how we can direct it. Yeah, exactly. You do I really love the earrings, and um, you know when it comes to culture and design, I'm always noticing those things. And it's the incorporation of art and culture in the earrings that you wear that I love so much. You know, I can always just tell. And just like you said, you always have like a simple look. But the earrings are always saying something or delivering some sort of a message, you know. <laughs> and I, I do like that because all three of you, I see that, you know, you, your mom and your sister. So that's nice. Um, what would you like to see change or improve in the art industry here in Ghana? More women artists. Okay. Yes. And I think, well, those spaces are there, but I think it would be good to have more of an art education in the schools. Um, I would say I understand that sometimes art is the last thing that people think about when they have to put food on the table and stuff because art is seen as a luxury good or a luxury industry or a lifestyle industry that a lot of people can't afford to um, have. But I think, well, as when we were kids, so when we were younger, Art was one of the first things that we exposed ourselves to or we created as children, if I can put it that way. So I feel the older we get, life gets harder and that 
excitement and like, creativity just leave our bodies for some reason due to the decisions we have to make, like adulting and um, you know just hard decisions on life. Just life, yeah. yeah, life basically. So um, it would be nice if um, we could encourage our youth to still. Um, yeah, pursue um, their creativity and art because I feel a lot of people are talented or everyone is creative in their own way but then they are instantly cut off due to like the um, various systems we put ourselves in so I would say that would be a really good thing to explore but also uh, women artists should not feel discouraged there are people like us out there so I think if um, we are more vocal um, it would be great to see, yeah, such as a platform like this, which is really amazing. Um, it would be great to have more conversations so that our voices are heard, not, and also our works are seen as well. So, because we also have things to say, and I guess the conversations we have in society. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. What What would you uh, What would you um, recommend as a way to sort of groom? young artists when I say young maybe is this something we should start thinking about from when kids are very young mm-hmm. at what point do you think it's a good time to start introducing how would you really groom or nurture you know that artistic nature of your child um, I'll say well children are very children are visual learners and I feel it would be good to expose them to um, institutions or spaces that um, encourage creativity. So maybe taking them to an art gallery, taking them to museums. I'm just talking from my experience where I was fortunate enough to go to the few galleries and museums we had in the country. And also books as well is also a really good source of um, learning about what is out there, um, what people create and do, um, also being practical, playing with their hands, learning about the different forms. And it doesn't have to be like Western related playing with any paint. There's also sculpture, there's music, there's interior design, there's like playing with space, there's architecture, there's there's so many forms of creating that I think children should continue learning and yeah, exposing themselves to. Yeah, so it's all down to regular like, adults and allowing their minds to run free and not um, shutting it down or um, putting a stop to the mind from starting out. Start as we know with them, so we know with them. <laughs> at a very young age and you, know, you yeah. don't know what will come. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, so it's been amazing. It's been really amazing catching up with you and learning more about what you do. I just have one last thing. So, yeah, just a message. Leave us with a message to just sort of help us think about art, culture, design, you know, what, what can you leave us with? Hmm. And and encourage an entrepreneur out there. <laughs> just start, um, stop sitting on the idea, stop overthinking it. Sometimes it's better to just start and fail than not do it at all. Um, I am take this advice as well <laughs> sometimes you sit on something for years then you always discourage yourself so I'll say it's really really important to just start doing whatever you thought of doing and talk to those close to you those that you trust to hold you accountable as well and yeah I'll say yeah, the main thing is just do it whatever you're thinking about but make sure it's legal <laughs> but yeah I'll say that's the main thing so where can we find you on social media, your website? You can find me on Instagram at Nakina, that's N-A-K-I-N-A-R-H. You can find me on my website at www.nakina.com. And, yeah, and soon to be on, oh, on Neek Avenue. <laughs> um,